All right, I've already taken the time to cut one of mine down to the final length. Uh, I'm not going for any uniform length, any uh, set standard. It is the longest that each one will be. Uh, if there are a little bit of height difference in between the two, uh, I don't care because there is two and not, say, three or four per set. Uh, any height difference, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a contrast, so it, it doesn't bother me any. Um, I've got one cut. And I'm going to cut the other one of this walnut real quick once I find the shortest piece, which I think is this one. Now it's time to uh, now it's time to cut this thing down. What I did is I found my shortest piece on the inside and I marked the center location in it and I'm just going to cut this thing in half first and with it cut in half now I will take this let's see I'll just take these and trim them up to length After they're all cut to length, uh, rough length, I need to start drilling out this center cavity for the material of the salt and pepper. Uh, like I said, I've got a five centimeter depth uh, on my drill press. I'm okay with going all five. I thought I'd have to stay with four and a half just because of my material here, but I've got enough room to go all five. I'm using a one third horsepower drill press with a wobbly arbor, so nothing fancy. Um, but it, it drills better than my hand drill. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this stuff drilled out. Well, I got a little dust on the floor, not much. Um, this thing tends to throw dust more than the uh, miter saw does, it seems like. Shavings, anyway. Um, but for the most part, this thing uh, has really done a good job on my miter saw, or multi-function stand, I could say now, at collecting the dust. So, if we look in here... See all the green. This thing is really doing what it's supposed to do. Collecting all this. Anyway, that's working in its new location. So I got those holes drilled out. And now uh, I guess I'm going to glue the top and bottom on. Alright, I'm at the stage where I can glue the tops on. And I've been shuffling around a little bit because this is some really deep green poplar and I just love the way it looks and I think I think that it does it injustice by putting this this uh, booger green poplar on top of it uh, I really wish I had some more of this dark green stuff all I have left is this little beat up strip that's got nail holes and all kinds of junk in it so I ripped off what I could and I think the bottom of one of these is gonna have a hole showing through um, but my problem is let me line this up with the back and I'll show you that I don't have the full thickness or the full width of the material yeah it's only about I'm exaggerating that a little bit it's only about a sixteenth of an inch so what I'm gonna do is pick the thickest side that I have left which I think is this one and I'm going to push it in just a little bit and kind of center it that direction and very carefully trim down the sides. Um, but luckily I had a small enough piece anyway for me to use. So it's going to look a whole lot better with the matching poplar. I just got to reduce the size by a little bit. All right, I've got all my lid and bases glued on. Uh, didn't really film the glue. It's nothing special there. 
Um, but what I did make note of is on one of these, I drilled off center. So I made note that this wall is pretty thin. So be careful when I get to cleaning all this up. But anyway, um, it's starting to take shape. Uh, inside cavity is drilled. Uh, I did not drill out the bottom yet, uh, like I said I was going to. Um, once I drill out, uh, if I were to drill out the bottom, I would have to drill it out again once I put this plate on, so it's just, just pointless. I'll wait till I'm done. Alright, so I've got all of these glued together, tops and bottoms, and I'm left with these, these shapes. Uh, I've already tested this once, how I'm going to cut this off, and it's, uh, it's working pretty good. It's pretty safe for me anyway. What I'm just doing is since I've got a nice flat surface on both sides, I'm resting it up against the face and I'm using uh, against this fence and I'm using my thumb and hand as a nice tight clamp. Uh, there's no wiggle to that. It's not going anywhere. Um, and what I'm doing is since this is a my sled, since this is a zero insert or a, a zero clearance curve cut right here, uh, I can edge my piece over ever so slightly so I know how much material is being removed. Uh, I've got a really good blade in here uh, and the the, the, uh, the finish right here is so smooth like I, I, I can think I can go right to 220 sandpaper. This is just absolutely smooth. So I'm going to do that all the way around. Uh, I tracked down some some corks so we'll be doing that next. So I use my table saw sled to very carefully square off all these edges and I'm left with this setup here for the salt and pepper shakers. I've got my poplar and my walnut. Um, but like always, I'm human, I screwed up. When I, when I glued these together, I made no notes or notation on the pieces to tell what's the top and what's the bottom so this side could be the top or this side could be the top you never know um, so what I did is I know that if I'm gonna have a top piece then I'm gonna have a grid of holes okay that's given and I know if I got a bottom piece I know I've got an inch and three-eighths inch one and three-eighths inch uh, Forstner bit hole that I will have recessed location for the the uh, cork. So what I did is I drilled a hole that would be part of the top grid but if it was on bottom would also be removed by the Forstner bit. So I drilled a hole on both sides. Uh, come, come to find out this is the bottom this is the top. So that's part of my pattern that I'm going to drill and in the same location that's going to be removed by the Forstner bit. So, easy way to save a big mess up. And I've got all my tops carefully marked out, carefully cut. Uh, that went relatively well. I didn't mess up any of those, so thank goodness for that. Um, I did find some corks. Um, these things are hard to come by. I, I went all over town looking for these things. No, no uh, liquor stores or anything like that had any laying around. And Walmart had some of these for like four bucks. So, the cost of this project so far, four bucks. Uh, I'm going to take them out of the package, drill a couple holes in some scraps to see how deep I need to go with my uh, bottom cuts. I've got my one and three eighths inch uh, Forstner bit put back in place, and I'm going to go at depth just a little bit taller than this uh, this cap on the cork. With the counterbore drilled out, I can now take a piece of this cork to test fit it. It fits in there nice and snug. Tip it upside down. It's not coming out. And these little recess cut off pieces give me a nice finger room to wiggle it out. Really all that's left to do is to clean them up on my belt sander and then just gently round the corner.
I didn't want to get too aggressive with the, these on the belt sander here. Uh, it's unplugged, by the way. Didn't want to get too aggressive uh, on the belt sander here, so I've got it all nice and neat, and then I'm going to finish it up by hand with some 220. Well, you guessed right. It's going to be mineral oil again. Um, just quick and easy finish. I'm just going to smear some oil all over it, wipe it down, and call it a day. This stuff is, is so cheap, so quick, so easy, can't go wrong. I gotta say though, uh, if, if anyone's been keeping up with my, with my posts on Lumberjocks, um, I try to make a point to comment on every walnut project. I, I absolutely love the look of walnut. This is, uh, this is so cool. I can't wait till I get to that one. But a nice, even coating of mineral oil inside the counter bore. I'm going to put a thick coat on all of them and then as soon as I get done, uh, that's plenty enough time for it to soak in as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down. So, man, that looks beautiful. I really like that. That's cool. It's one of the best parts of woodworking or anything really that you, you do yourself, not necessarily woodworking, metalworking, uh, anything, I think. When you get done and you can say, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm glad I did it that way, you know. That's what, uh, that's what it's all about. There's quite a bit of history in these pieces. I've got, let's see, the, the maple obviously is this headboard. Uh, the green poplar, that was, let's see, I think that was from the bed salvage, the mattress. So that's another salvage project. And uh, this walnut was from from two couches ago, uh, a project I never filmed, or never recorded. Man, look at that. That is some walnut right there. That is cool. I like that. Now to this poplar, see what it looks like all shined up. And to think, this is something somebody was going to throw away. Sometimes it's just the simple things that really make you smile. <laughs> look at that. That is neat looking. That is crazy. That's some green wood. So here they are, all nice and done. Walnut turned out great. And the poplar is absolutely crazy. I, that is just, that blows my mind how green that is. Of course the uh, corks are in the bottom. A little dusty on my table here. But yeah, I wanted to recap this headboard. Uh, the 3 by 3 by 7 solid maple blocks, I think, I, I thought they were too valuable to cut up, so I used the rest of the scrap to make these, which was great. Uh, this walnut came from, uh, let's see, it came from two sofas ago. Two sofa trash to treasures ago. I didn't record that one at all, but that came from a sofa. Uh, this poplar came from the mattress trash to treasure, if I'm not mistaken. So that was reclaimed, and obviously this maple came from this project. Also have these finials, I guess you could call them, these maple blocks, all this other maple, these small little maple cutoffs and strips that I made throughout this build from cutting. Um, man, that's, that's cool. That is really cool. And there's the last, uh, that's what's left of the love seat that I used last time. But uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty proud of these. These are these are neat. Um, not sure where they're going. Who's gonna get them? Uh, I don't use them. I won't use them rather. So these are gonna get be given away to somebody. But that's that's it. That's the recap, and I am done. So any Michigan State fans? I grew up in Michigan. Some Spartans. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll quit rambling.